Welcome to a new episode of my Linux PCI driver tutorials. Today I want to show you how to use PCI or PCI Express interrupts in a Linux driver. And you have to know PCI or PCI Express devices support various ways of interrupts. So there is an old legacy interrupt available on a lot of PCI or PCI Express devices, but there are newer implementations, for example, MSI interrupts, but in today's video I will only show you the legacy interrupts because my PCI GPO card only supports legacy interrupts. Okay, and, and now let's switch to the manual of my PCI GPO card for a second, so I will show you what we are going to do today. So here is the memory map of my GPO card and we have used these five registers already in our last episode of this tutorials where I accessed the memory and I.O. space of this card. And these four registers up here over them you can read out the state of the GPIO and over this register here at offset F8 you can set the mode of the GPIOs byte-wise so you can set them to input or outputs here. And here at register F9 we have the interrupt control register. So if we want to enable interrupts we have to set byte, one, uh, byte 0 to 1 to enable interrupts and over byte 1 to 4 we can select the interrupt source. So we can use P um, GPIO 1 to GPIO 6, 16 to generate an interrupt. And in my example I will use GPIO 1 to um, generate the interrupt because this is this pin here yeah and before I'm setting up the interrupt I have to set um, the, the um, mode of the first eight GPIOs to input but this is already the default state so we don't have to do any writes here Okay, so now let's start. Here I am connected to the PC where I've plugged in my PCI GPIO card. And now let me navigate into the folder where I have the driver source code in it. So this is our Linux driver and here we have our make file. So let's open up the source code for the driver and let's start coding. Okay, so the first thing I will do is I will create a new struct from the type a new struct called driver data and this struct will only um, include a pointer to bar zero and that's it. Uh, oh wrong brace here. Okay. Then at the next thing we have to implement the interrupt service routine. So whenever I will press this button, the interrupt will be generated from the PCI card, the PC will get a signal and the Linux kernel will call the interrupt service routine, which we will write right now. And the interrupt service routine has the return value from the type IRQ return under T. Then we can specify any given name. I will use my IRQ handler here. And the first argument is the interrupt, the number of the interrupt which has been triggered. And the second argument is a void pointer to some data which we can pass with the interrupt service routine. Then I will declare a variable from the type driver data and this will be a pointer I will call my data. Then I will print out a small message to the kernels log so I know I'm in the interrupt service routine Q service routine okay and then I will cast the void pointer to driver data struct and in case my data is not a null pointer I can use it to handle the interrupt. So down here in the manual we can find some information how we can handle the interrupt. So the important sentence is down here or 
we can see with a rising edge of the selected signal a flip-flop is set on the card which is directly connected to the PCI slot. At the end of the interrupt service routine the internal flip-flop must be cleared with a write instruction to address F9. So after we got an interrupt we have to write to this address here. And I will do this right now. So of set YRQ. So here I will use IO write 8 and I want to write a 1 and a 1 shifted by 1 which so this is the interrupt enable bit and this is the interrupt source bit so I will use GPIO 1 here. And then I can use the pointer to bar 0 and I will add my offset to it here. And this should clear the this should reset the flip-flop and clear the reset and then I can return IRQ handle to signalize to the kernel I have successfully handled the interrupt. Okay, and now what I also need to do is I have to set everything up here in the probe function. So once again I will declare a pointer from the type struct driver data and I will call it my data here and I need a new variable from the type unset int 8 I will call IRQ line. Or I don't need this here. Never mind. Okay so the first thing here is instead of this is now part of our driver data struct so I have to include this here. Okay, here we are doing a read and a read access. And here we would set um, GPIO 0 to 7 to outputs, but as I need them for my interrupt source, I will delete this line, then the GPIOs remain in input mode. Okay, and now let's set up the interrupt. Oh, and I forgot one important thing, sorry. So before using the my data pointer here I have to allocate memory for it. So my data I will allocate memory with the manage function def m kz alloc. So I will allocate memory and initialize everything with zeros. The first argument is the device um, to which the me memory is bind to and this is my PCI device. The next argument is the size of bytes I want to reserve and this is the size of struct driver data. And the last argument is the flag. I will use GFP kernel here. And now in case my data is a null pointer, we are out of memory and I have to generate um, or I have to exit here. So error out of memory and I will return error no memory here. Okay and now we can set up the interrupt. So here I will use a managed function. So first we have to check if there is an interrupt available and our PCI driver struct has a field called IRQ and if this value is bigger than zero we have an interrupt available and we can use it. Okay. And now to um, set up the interrupt, I will use a managed function here. And the managed function is called defm request irq. The first argument is the device to which um, we want to for which we want to request an interrupt. The second argument is the number of interrupt we want to request. Then we have to pass a pointer to our interrupt service routine. Well, we can pass some flags, but I will set this to zero. Then we can specify a name for the interrupt. So you could put any string in here and I will just use the module name for the interrupt here too. And the last field is the data we want to pass when the interrupt service routine is called and I will pass um, the driver data struct my data here. 
Okay, in the case this returns a value which is not zero, or which is greater than zero, an error occurred. So let me copy these three lines here and put them in here. Um, error requesting IRQ. And in case everything worked fine, let us print out requesting IRQ was successful. And I will print out the number of IRQ I have um, requested. Okay, and now we have to we have requested the interrupt, but now we have to set up the um, PCI device for the interrupt. And we can do this. We have already done this, so let's jump to the interrupt handler here. And I will just copy this line here because this is exactly what we need. So here I am, I am, I am enabling interrupts and the interrupt should be um, triggered when I push this button here. Okay, and that's it. That should be it. As we're using managed functions, we don't have to free anything here in the remove function because the memory is binded to the lifecycle of our device here. Okay, so now let me try to build this kernel module and let's see how much mistakes I've made. Okay. Okay, incompatible. Oh, yeah. Sorry for this. Yeah, this is your there should be an end here. Okay, let's see if it works now. Yeah, looks good. So I will clear it and I will try to load my kernel module. Um, CIKO. Let's look at the kernels log. So we have requested interrupt 16 here successfully. And now let's push the button. So I've pushed the button, let's check the kernel stop once again, and you can see the interrupt service routine was triggered. So the interrupt handling worked, and I think the reason why we went into this interrupt service routine multiple times, but I only pressed the button once, is because I have a small bouncing problem here with this button. Okay, great. And when I remove the uh, module again, and now, if I press the button, yeah, nothing happens. Okay, so we have successfully used the old legacy PCI interrupts in a Linux driver. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've learned something and enjoyed the video. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.